a lot of people want the Detroit Lions <laughs> to move out. <laughs> I'm, I'm stalling here. No, a, lot, a lot of people want the Detroit Lions to move out of the six pick because there's not a lot of great value for their, them there. And there might be great value for other people mm -hmm. when you're sitting at six and you're looking who might be available. So trading back is all is a big thing. Trading back is something that the Detroit Lions have been in talks about. And right off the bat, two teams jump out to you that the Detroit Lions can trade back or get engaged with in conversations. One would be the Atlanta Falcons at eight. Yeah. And another one would be the Carolina Panthers at nine. Yeah. These are two teams that both need a quarterback. These are two teams that are probably looking to jump in front of the other one because they know the other team needs a quarterback. So if you're the Detroit Lions and you're sitting there at six – and let's say C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, one of these quarterbacks is still available, is still on the board, which they're going to be. Who are you trading back with? Who, who, are, who are you choosing as your tango partner to try to get back in the draft and get more assets? Another one could be. I got a couple of them. I'm the not Tennessee right now. Titans at 11. You think so? The, Actually, yeah. I mean, I'll see why not. But The New York Jets at 13. I'm just saying. Jets yeah. are probably going to sign a veteran. but Yeah. Yeah, the Jets, Jets are probably a squad that are probably just looking for a veteran at this point. Um, I don't know that they could gamble on another roll of dice at the quarterback position in the draft because they missed already with Zach Wilson. If they do so, it's just going to be at a point in the draft where, like, if Anthony Richardson, where he's initially slotted to go, falls, Jets could grab him. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, they, they need a, a veteran quarterback because they feel like they're ready to contend right now. And they, they're pretty damn close last year. And you look at the offensive numbers from – by the way, who was the guy who was placing that everyone was hyping up? Um, Mike, Mike, White. Mike White. Mike White. Even his numbers, boo-boo. Oh, at least he, I mean, he may have some gaudy like, passing numbers. Yeah, he's a backup. But they ended in a, in a loss. Yeah, I know. I know. But I'm just saying when people were hyping him up, it's like, yo, for what? What are you hyping this guy Mike up for? White. Zach Wilson did horrible. But, again, I think they're in a position for a veteran quarterback because of Derek Carr and Aaron Rodgers. I think their number one target's Aaron Rodgers, but Aaron Rodgers doesn't know what Aaron Rodgers is doing. Uh, yeah. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, Rodgers doesn't know he's Aaron Rodgers right yeah, now. He's still sober enough. Say, Aaron Rodgers doesn't know who Aaron Rodgers is right now. But I, I think the biggest things you look at are those two at eight and nine, which is the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers, because those are two teams that are young. They have assets. They have a lot of draft picks. They can move around. And if you could get a first round pick from one of those teams next year, it'll probably be in a pretty good spot. It'll probably some, be something you can work with. It might be another pick inside the top ten. So I'd be looking at them again. They're both going to try to jump. Excuse me. Ahead of the other one, if there is a quarterback available. Mm -hmm. So why not kick the tires on that? I got my list. I just got to double check the, the draft positions here. But Buccaneers, I think, is a team. I I can't guarantee it, but it almost makes sense for them to do it unless they land Derek Carr or, or whoever else. Because they have a team that's almost like ready to compete right now. If you look at uh, between uh, what the hell is his name, Mike? What the I can't think of his last name right now. Mike Evans. Mike yes. Evans. The other little shorter, faster guy. Chris Godwin. Thank you. Um, they feel like they're ready, like now. Maybe they're looking for that veteran piece. Mm -hmm. I don't think they have cap space to si sign a veteran piece. So I feel like draft is a, a place they can go. Now I don't know if they're expecting to compete this year doing that. Mm -hmm. But if not, rebuild. They're at 19. Rebuild. So the Pistons would get eight, or the, the Pistons. Pistons. The Lions would, would end up with <laughs> so 18, and, took the edible. 18 <laughs> and 19 at that point. Lions at eighteen and nineteen. Yeah, if they traded with the Buccaneers, that's kind of far back. That's a pretty far. That's a pretty far backdrop. But I, they do. So do you feel like they have a lot to offer though? I mean, Mike Evans a contract they probably want to get rid of. Uh, who's some of the, the, the key defenders anymore? Levante, Levante David, David. Yeah, but he's free agent. Mm -hmm. That's kind of it. Devin White. Devin White. I can't imagine. They're, yeah, probably Antoine Devin White's Winfield. a good one. Yeah, he's coming up, but we don't need a safety. Yeah, that's just a team. I think that's a far drop though. That's a far drop. Yeah. That's just one of the, this is one of the teams. Carolina obviously won. What about the New England Patriots? No. Think they're think good they're. with Mac Jones? Yeah. Bill Zach. Well, I don't know that they're good with them, but I don't know if they're going to – when the Patriots ever moved up to grab somebody. What you know? about the Washington Commanders? That's a team. That Washington I think, Commanders at 16. They either – that's a one I'd look out for Derek Carr, for Derek Carr landing spot. I don't know that he goes there because – remember the big stain we talked about with Calvin Johnson? Dan Snyder has one too. Yes. And I don't know that Derek Carr wants to go and – I know Dan Snyder may be selling the team soon. I don't know that he wants to put all his apples in, in that bucket or, and ride with that guy. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to. But uh, in terms of them moving up, yeah, that's another team too. Maybe they franchise paint. Oh, no, I wouldn't want to do that. 
Deron Payne. Yeah. Chase Young. Where are they picking? They're at 17? 16. They're at 16? I still feel like one of our, our, our corners are there. At least the heavyweight corners. I feel like we're in agreement with the top three in this year's draft class. Yes. What up, Chris? Well, that's what I was going to ask when you talk about trading back further than 8 or 9 or 10, somewhere in that range, is then you're probably putting yourself in a position where you don't get to choose the corner you want. And while it's been said that everyone in this draft class or the, the, three, the top three corners in this draft class are all pretty good and they're all within the same realm of each other, I'm sure... I'm sure Brad Holmes has a favorite. So would you, if you're Brad Holmes, you'd probably want to stay high enough up to where you choose the one that's that's your guy, right? Yeah, that's why I like eight and nine. I think both, like I said, both of those teams need a quarterback. Both of those teams are probably not going to be the big free agent signed quarterback, but they're going to be somebody that they can draft and build with because that both of them are in somewhat rebuilds, kind of mini rebuilds. Well, the Panthers are in mini rebuild. The Falcons are kind of a mess, <laughs> but. For me, you move back, you get some more capital there, and then you still have your pick of the litter of mm-hmm. those corners. Yeah, you could still choose whoever you want, whoever you seem to see to be as the best player. Yeah, and, and I'm not trying to sell you Washington as like the trade partner as a, the trade right. partner. Just I'm, bringing up I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm literally yeah. just bringing up options. Teams that that are, are that's, quarterback. That's just why I ask it. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm just bringing up teams that will be in there. Buccaneers to see in there. Carolina, yes, and that's the one that I, I think I like the most too. Spinny is his nine. Now. You like it because you get the now and not the later and the later. Because <laughs> you get the now at number nine, and you're, bam, you're right there, yeah. picking as soon as possible. But, like, what if somebody further has to give you more and you're just getting more back in value, especially with a guy like Brad Holmes who bats 700? Like, would you, would you almost want that more? I wouldn't mind that. You're giving that guy more bullets that. in the chamber. Giving more, yeah, more ammo to Brad Holmes is always a good idea. Unless it takes tight end in the first round. But I just think it's Careful. it's important to – because the Lions aren't that far off as well. Like the Lions aren't a uh-huh. team that's so far away. They need to keep stacking these players to keep stacking this equity. But I think if you trade back, you could still get a nice return from that 8 or 9 because they're going to have to give you something if they want to move up and desperately get one of those quarterbacks. There's a lot of talks about Lamar going to Atlanta. Yeah. So I almost want to like dismiss them, but at the same time, no. Do you think they're ready to, to draft a quarterback though? Because I feel like, actually, that's the team. Atlanta. Yes, hundred percent. I don't know. Olave is pretty good, or London's pretty good, but this is my logic with it. My whole plan in drafting back, or trading back, however you want to put it, is reaching those Caleb Williams sweepstakes the following year. Yeah. Into next year's draft, I feel like Atlanta's a team that could still be pretty bad. Yeah. Carolina, I think they, I mean, I, they, they whooped us. Maybe I had a little PTSD from that one, but I think they were, they were a bad team, but they were competitive. They're not terrible. Yeah. yeah. Their division's garbage. Their division they don't, is exactly. Garbage. They almost, actually, they would have made the playoffs had yes. the uh, Buccaneers lost, I believe, week 18. Mm-hmm. I could be mistaken on that one. The Raiders, the Raiders, they got to, too, right? Unless they just don't give. The Raiders need a quarterback. Unless they call the Lions sure. bluff. Yeah. By the way, speaking of. You guys, you guys don't like my mock call draft. My bluff. You guys Great don't like song. that mock draft later. Did you get the new one I sent, by the way, Chris? Yeah. Like your way so I have a, I have a question, too. When it comes to Anthony Richardson, like, mm-hmm. are we at this point in the draft where he is going to garner this type of, like, th- this type of desire where teams are going to trade up and take him? Because I remember early in the draft process, it, he was a guy that was looking at, okay, back end of the first round. Now are teams worried that he's not making it past eight or nine? Is that, is that real? I think so. I think he's going to keep climbing up, and especially when he goes to the Underwear Olympics and puts on a show. It's mm. going to be something that the people are going to love to see, and obviously we saw what that did with Zach Wilson. Mm. Like Zach Wilson blew up because of one throw. So I think when they sh- see Anthony Richardson show off his arm, show off his athleticism, his ability to throw on the run, that a lot of teams are going to want to move up to get that guy. I mean, who knows? Teams might be secretly in love with him right now. I mean, you could make the argument that he's the most talented quarterback in this year's draft class. Like, he has the most raw ability. He's mobile. He's big. He has a cannon. Now, the accuracy and touch is, like, the the stuff I feel like is is the big beef with Richardson. But if you get a guy – if you have a Ben Johnson on your team, which rarely teams do, but – oh, man, Brad Holmes, if you're listening. If you you have a Ben Johnson on your team – 
maybe you might want to take that risk because you have a guy within your organization that can mold him. I have a microphone right here. I don't really hold my shirt, but anyway. But I don't know the Detroit Lions do it. But again, I'm teasing my mock draft. I don't know if it'll be next segment or next one. We'll talk Bobby Wagner, and then we'll get to that one. But we can do that. I think a lot of people will be surprised with that one. But I, I guess out of all the teams, and this is a short list that I have, and in the Wilbur Sports Chat, I wonder what you guys think too, and or call in. Because my, again, my goal is Caleb Williams. Yes. Which one of these guys you think is is giving you the best odds at that? Between oh, there's a lot of teams actually: Bucks, Carolina, Atlanta, Vegas, Washington, or New Orleans. Probably Atlanta. Probably Atlanta. Atlanta's probably the team that's going to finish the worst out of those, I would say. Yeah. I almost want to say, like, the Bucks too, maybe? Because you think if they if they make the move and get the rookie, like... They blow it up. Well, yeah, but you think they're winning if they do that? And possibly, yeah, they blow it up. At the same time, I don't know. Yeah, I know, I know tanking's a- different in the NFL, but mm-hmm. isn't the whole Caleb Williams thing, isn't some team at least one team or two teams going to talk themselves into, hey, we don't need to make this move for Anthony Richardson, this gamble, when next year you got Caleb Williams. And right? Drake May. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, there's taking the NFL and really Quinn isn't Harris. a thing. I, yeah. think, I think you saw that this year in the Texans and Colts game. You know, that's <laughs> – Lovey Smith won his last game of the year and, and knocked the Texans out of that number one overall pick. And now it's possibly they have to trade to get a guy that they want mm-hmm. unless the Bears find a trade partner too. So I, I don't really believe in taking it at the NFL level. I think maybe GMs and coaches may try at a certain point. Or well, we know the Dolphins. Dol- GM exactly, is. exactly, like, like that situation. But ultimately, at the end of the day, the football players, it's mm. not a sport you could just right. you could fake. You know, like you could get hurt. Your, your money's not guaranteed. I get that. But it, I was asking the GMs, like, do you mm-hmm. think there is a GM of an organization all that's going to talk Williams themselves? Next year? Yeah, that's going to. Commanders. Yeah, I talk would. themselves into it. If I was Commanders, I would for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right hand up. Who are we? The, the commanders. commanders. There's a lot going on. I don't the, know why the, I thought that. I, I really find it hard to believe the Lions are going to stay put at six, though. Unless something crazy happens and Jalen Carter falls. I don't see the Lions using the number six pick. I can see them using it. But obviously, I, like, I'm telling myself what you're saying. That feels better. <laughs> you know? It feels better in the league.